Hi, Dr. Bredesen. What have we learned about infections and brain aging since the last book? Yeah, it's become clear that uh, infections uh, are an important part of cognitive decline. And, you know, in the past, we used to think about infections like, oh, you get encephalitis or you get meningitis, but we're not talking about that severe of an infection. What we're talking about now is changes in the normal microbiome. So, of course, there's been a lot written about the gut microbiome and more recently about the oral and rhinocinal microbiomes. But most recently, there's been attention on the brain microbiome. Now, I was taught when I was training in neurology that the brain is sterile. There should be no organisms in there. But it turns out that that's not the case. There is a normal brain microbiome. And surprisingly, what's in there is largely coming from your mouth. It's, this, it's very similar to your oral microbiome. So it's clear that there is some sort of contact and connection between uh, your, your oral cavity and your brain. And these are playing an important role. There are changes that occur as you're getting exposure. And of course, the one that has had the most exposure, the most discussion has been herpes simplex type 1, but there are multiple others. Herpes simplex, uh, HHV uh, 6A, for example, uh, P. gingivalis, of course, and T. denticola, F. nucleatum, all from the uh, oral microbiome. Uh, and then things like uh, uh, acne bacterium cutis coming from your, your uh, nasal passages, another one. And they're on and on. This is turning out to be uh, a rich site of different uh, organisms. And their work a few years ago is showing um, that uh, fungi are also present and clearly different and clearly more present in the brains of patients with Alzheimer's disease. So there's no question that we're learning more and more about not just infections, full-on infections, the way we used to think of as encephalitis and things like that, but really about changes in the microbiome composition that can lead to production of amyloid and p-tau and the very things, and also alpha-synuclein that we associate with Lewy body disease and with Parkinson's disease and with MSA, multiple system atrophy. So these relationships uh, are more and more important. And, and one of the interesting things that's come out of research is that if you have herpes simplex, as an example, so those who have cold sores, um, and aren't treating them. And it's a good idea, actually, to treat them to make sure that you don't have a lot of outbreaks. That's been associated with increased risk for cognitive decline in a very nice and large study out of Taiwan. That when you elicit the response that we associate with Alzheimer's, where you're now making amyloid, it's at a very, very low MOI, multiplicity of infection. In other words, it's at a very low exposure that you're making this amyloid. And in the studies that were done, it was one, one particle, one virus per 10,000 cells. So think about this. It's, imagine you have a town of 10,000. You've got one burglar coming in. You don't want to shut the whole town down. So what you're doing, you're trying to incarcerate that one person without lots of change in the ongoings of your town. You want to avoid the inflammatory response. And this is probably why we have things like amyloid and synuclein. And these things will sequester, will bind, will isolate and kill these pathogens without shutting down the and compromising um, the neural function, which is why you can live with amyloid in your brain for decades and do very well as long as you don't have that increased exposure as long as you don't have the in pro-inflammatory part that now starts to compromise brain function.